mounts on special prosecutor to publish report on corruption risk assessment into controversial Ejapa royalties deal with parliament yet to get formal communications on government's next move. We want to see that risk assessment, how it was done, what went into it, the underlying assumptions, the conclusions thereof and why the special prosecutor hasn't published that document. Uh, we still maintain that that deal is a bad deal. This is Top Story with Evans Mensa. And Top Story is always brought to you by Gasim Cement, the uh, nation builder, and also uh, brought to you by Vodafone. The future is exciting, ready. Now, Pressure is tonight uh, mounting on the special prosecutor to publish a full report on the corruption risk assessment his office undertook into the controversial the Japan royalties deal. Today we learned from the Jubilee House that government will soon be communicating its formal decision on what to do next. Uh, on the back of that corruption risk assessment about the Japa deal. That communication, we understand, is yet to get to Parliament. It was the special prosecutor himself who chose to go public after he submitted his report uh, to the president two weeks ago. We are now learning. Uh, Joseph Opokogapo, who is my parliamentary correspondent, joins me uh, in the studio uh, with more on this as we get further reactions and clarity on, on the way forward with the Japa deal. Um, Joseph, let's quickly go through the timelines as spelled out by the special prosecutor himself as regards this uh, corruption risk assessment. So the deal itself was approved on the 14th of August 2020 by Parliament. Following that, a little over three weeks after that, on the 10th of September 2020, the special prosecutor then took the decision that he can go ahead and undertake this said corruption risk assessment uh, based on the information that had gone within the public domain and all the concerns that civil society groups had actually. When did he finish the job? So he went on with that and completed that said risk assessment on the 15th of October 2020. So that's uh, a little over a month after he started his work. Mm, and this Monday. will be like two weeks ago? And this will be like... Now just, a, what, just a little over two weeks ago? Yes, yeah, so when he finished his work on the 15th of October, on the 16th that's of October, the very next a day, day after that, he communicated the details of that to the president. And it's been, what, about 16 days since then that we are yet to get details on what the president And he, he seemed to give impression that he's somewhat frustrated that the presidency has said nothing since the final report got to the, got to the Jubilee House. And in this statement he issued earlier today, he makes the point that two weeks is more than too long for this office to continue withholding the announcement of the completion of its 64-page report to the public. He goes on to say it is important that this office has the freedom to discharge its anti-corruption mandate and keep the public informed. I have therefore decided to bring the facts of the conclusion of the anti-corruption assessment of the Japa royalties transaction by this office to the attention of the public and to avoid the continued speculations on this matter. So uh, he makes the point that it's been more than two weeks since this communication went to the presidency. So then he's found it necessary, and that's the interesting It's almost as if he's saying, well, why didn't the Jubilee House make this public? And then, then I have to. I mean, I, it almost it, nobody had suggested that somebody was preventing him, but he's suggesting that, that you know he has independence to do so and he should go ahead and do it. In fact, in the statement, he makes the point that the decision to first have taken this to government was out of courtesy. So he makes the point that the special prosecutor in the letter that conveys the conclusions and observations of the anti-corruption assessment to the presidency and the finance minister was actually done as a matter of courtesy mm. before informing the public. Well, well, tonight there's pressure on him himself now that he's gone public with this to say, I mean, well, he says nothing in this document about the contents of what he found just to announce to the public that he's finished. The pressure tonight is for him to simply go ahead and now publish the full details of this corruption risk assessment. Uh, 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 presidential correspondent Elton Broby has also been working his sources all day. Elton, you reported at midday that your sources tell you that the, uh, a, a communication will be going to Parliament on the back of this corruption risk assessment. All right, so Evans, what, what we got uh, before midday, uh, we, we have three issues. One, how to deal with a formal statement that we are still expecting from the presidency and what 
is likely to be contained in that particular statement. And then also, uh, the next step will be now go to Parliament, uh, write officially to the Speaker, and then get the Speaker to refer the matter back to the Finance Committee, get them to sit on it, and then report back to uh, the plenary for a decision to be taken. And then the third, how to do whether or not this Parliament can deal with the matter as before they write. Before the life of this parliament comes Expires. to close. Now, the information we got... Which is what? This end of this week? Yeah, so... By, or yeah, the after the election... ...to rise on Saturday, come back after the election, and then the final dissolution will be on the midnight of 6th of January 2021. Into seven. So they have a few mm. days to deal with this matter. And from the parliamentary side, when I spoke to the chairman of the finance committee, looking at the volume of work and then the space they have, and also looking at what they need to do in addressing the concerns that we are likely hearing... Uh, may come up in this statement, it may be difficult uh, to see this through and may, you know, uh, die with this parliament. So in the next parliament, a fresh document may then have to be put before the House for consideration. So these are the key issues that we got from the Jubilee House Fair, what our sources told us. Uh, that the President, uh, in the statement that we are expecting, may instruct the Finance Minister to put the agreement back before the House. And the finance minister will be asked to specifically ask for further scrutiny on the investment agreement, allocation agreement, as well as the relationship agreement mm. as contained in the Japan Royalty deal. And then secondly, also take into consideration the inputs that they got from the civil society groups, uh, the faith-based organization, and other relevant bodies that spoke on this particular matter. And then thirdly, uh, look at the concerns raised by the Auditor General in formulating the new agreement that will be put before the House and then come to a, a, a conclusion on it. The ultimate goal in all of this is to allow a lot more people to have input into this, uh, make it more transparent, uh, give it the scrutiny that it deserves before Parliament can put their seal on it when the, the matter finally comes to the plenary of the House. Well, as we speak tonight, um, there's no indication that if the formal, uh, for the statement has not come, we, we know that for certain. For and, and the formal communication to Parliament, is, we, we understand, isn't still ready yet. Mm. But the minority side in Parliament, they've been uh, demanding that the special prosecutor uh, makes public the corruption risk assessment because he conducted it and has a copy. Listen to uh, John Ginapo. We are waiting to receive official communication before anything is brought to Parliament, it has to go through the proper procedure and due process. And so, as we speak, we are not seized with any document. Uh, there was a one-sided approval in Parliament. And based on our sign orders, it means that there was approval. And so if they are coming back with that same document, then it can only amount to some changes. And we don't know the kind of changes they are talking about. Number two, we haven't even cited the report from the special prosecutor. We want to see that risk assessment, how it was done, what went into it, the underlying assumptions, the conclusions thereof, and why the special prosecutor hasn't published that document. Uh, we still maintain that that deal is a bad deal. We maintain that we ought to pull the bricks, build consensus, and ensure that we do the proper thing. We are just about rising this week. We don't want to see a similar occurrence of what happened. It's that same procedure that has brought us to this quagma. I think that the president should exercise some amount of restraint and allow us to do what is right and go through the due process. So there's that chance that if it comes back, you, the minority, may possibly work out like it is the first time, depending on why you see in the, the final report that the special prosecutor wrote? The national interest is paramount to the minority. We are not interested in a workout. We are interested in safeguarding the nation's assets. We are interested in doing what is right and proper. Our duty as a minority is to represent the people of Ghana and do what is right and proper. Yeah. And let me assure the people of Ghana that the minority side led by the Venerable Honorable Harun Idrisu will do justice to this and we would serve the interests of the country.